The modern world is bad. It is inhumane, unfair, and unjust. This is the world of money. It is not for the people. It is for those who produce money, for bankers and financiers. And ordinary people just serve them as attendants. They sweep their palaces. What lies behind the social welfare? Labor. But why does the banker live in a hundred and a thousand times better than worker, than peasant? Why does wildcatter live better? All of them, do they work harder? It's nonsense. It's ridiculous to say. They do not even produce anything. No material values. But why? Don't you know? Moreover, perhaps you wonder with all sincerity now, reading all of this, well, banker and worker, simple hard worker like me or my neighbor Johnny? Hmm, it cannot be compared. Banker is a bank, money, relations, and contacts. But who are we together with Johnny? Nobody. Naturally, the banker lives better than we do. But there is nothing natural here. The point is that everyone got used to this state of affairs and they took it for granted. As a matter of course, a banker has to live better and it cannot be otherwise. But it may be otherwise. So why? Why does a banker work less but live better, better than worker or miner? However, intuitively, you've got the answer by yourselves. Because the banker is a bank. Money. Exactly, money. This is the whole point, the cornerstone. And about them, about the money, we should talk more in details. So, what is money? Have you ever thought about it? The calculation tool, the measure of labor? As we are told from childhood, almost from the cradle, we have to work, work, and work. The money won't fall down from the sky. They should be honestly and hardly earned, etc., etc., etc. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Familiar and nausea. Say it, by the way, to Abramovich, who honestly and hardly earned all his billions. Just for fun, say it, how to earn money honestly. You will laugh to death. Yes, we have to work, but what should we expect in the end? A small pension and half-starved old age? Poverty. You have spent all your life working on some oligarch. You have been taken away all your power, energy, and health. You've been squeezed like a lemon. And after that, you've just been thrown into the dustbin as the fulfilled material. Is this necessary? But this is the reality, horrific reality, of modern society. This is what we should all expect in the end, almost certainly. Everything ends up this way for the vast majority of people in today's world. As it ended up for their mothers, fathers, grandmothers, and grandfathers. As it will end up in the present state of affairs for their children and grandchildren, great-grandchildren. Then in turn, for their children and grandchildren, and so on. The way of the world. Why? All of this is wrong, unfair. It must not exist. Why do some people have to have everything, but others have nothing? Why do some people walk in golden slippers, and the others barely make ends meet? They don't know how to feed their children, although all of them work honestly. Why does it happen? After all, we are the people, the brothers. We are equal, aren't we? Then why? Because there is a lie around us. A huge, continuous, monstrous lie. Do not believe anything that is broadcasted daily on TV by satiated and well-groomed masters of life. And people are not equal. And the money is not even a measure of labor. All of this is an insolent and shameless lie. Lie, 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 and lie once again. It is the news which is hung on your ears. Why do they do this? just to make it easier to manage people. So you are oligarch now, or even an ordinary worthless deputy. Are you equal with others? In what? You live in a different way, eat in a different way, and rest in a different way. In one day, he spends more than you spend in a year. His wife doesn't even get out of Corchevo. And yours? He is treated in the best Swiss clinics. And what about you? 
his children, and yours. Have you compared? Well, where is your equality? Perhaps you are equal in rights, aren't you? Oh, I forgot about the rights, as it is written in our Constitution, isn't it? By the way, there are a lot of things written on the fence, too. Nice and intelligent things. Read in your spare time. You will be inspired by these things. And what kind of equal rights do we have with the oligarch or the banker? I'm just curious. Right to work? Well, we have such a right in our country. Nobody argues. Work hard for the benefit of... You work hard at the factory, and he, so quickly, as they say, to each his own. The right to elect and to be elected. Hmm. Well, you can elect, of course. You're welcome. Just vote. No matter how people vote, most important, how these votes are counted. And what about to be elected? Are you going to be elected somewhere? Do you have the money for that? Gold reserve for the election campaign? No? So breathe smoothly and relax. Come back to your factory. Continue to work hard. And do not rock the boat. The feast of life is not for you. It is for those who are more equal than you. What else is there? However, it is not the essence. There is no sense for further continuation. I hope everything is already clear. What kind of equal rights you both have and who are more equal. It is all about universal equality and fraternity. It is figured out, I think. Now we move on to the money. We won't talk about the measure of labor. These are fairy tales for idiots. Money is not any measure of labor. Otherwise, you would live like a lord, or maybe you don't work too much. I don't know. But what is money? Shackles, fetters, chains, durable and unbreakable chains holding the slaves in subjection more reliably than any steel. What are slaves in the 21st century? Do you ask me what slaves? You and me, all around. You, me, him, her, all of us. We are all slaves, slaves of money. More precisely, we are slaves of those who print the money. We are slaves of our masters. Nothing has been changed at all during these centuries on earth. Oh, ho, oh, oh. we live so far in the slave system. Only outwardly, everything has become more decent, more delicate, and more sophisticated. Our shackles are no longer heavy, rusty, and steel. They are invisible and weightless now. They don't seem to exist. You can go wherever you want. You can do whatever you want. You are free. But in fact, the shackles still exist. And damn, you are not free. Freedom is an illusion. Money, that's the point. Well, where can you go without money? It is not the Stone Age today. You cannot live in a cave. You cannot dress yourself in animal skins. And you cannot hunt for mammoth. And where are they, these damn mammoths? You need a house, clothes, food. And this is all about money, money, money. And once again, money. After all, everything around is just for the money. You cannot make a single step without them. But where do you find the money? That's right, you have to earn them. Do you hear? Clatter of chains, whistling of the whip, and shouting of overseers. Have you ever thought that it is immoral to sell yourself? That it is a kind of prostitution to sell your own strengths, brain, time? What is the difference from selling your own body? Yes, but will you object that people have to work? If everybody would stop doing their jobs, what's going to happen then? We will resettle to the caves again, and we will get dressed in animal skins, won't we? That's right. Everything is right. It is very reasonable, logical, and easy to understand. As ABC, even I understood. That's what I'm talking about. Nothing has been changed at all during all these centuries on Earth. And these convincing arguments 
could be heard for sure in slave society when the slaveholders had been trying to make understand their obstinate, blunt slaves who didn't want to work for them. That it is necessary to work hard, stupid slaves. And later, quite recently, in historical times, the landlords told their serfs, after all, if you stop to work, to plow, to sow and reap, what's going to happen then? Our society will collapse and we will die of hunger. We will run wild. Yes, it is necessary to work, to create something useful for the society. Otherwise, society will degrade and die. But firstly, we have to work voluntarily, not for a bowl of soup, and not only in order to survive, we have to do what we like to do. And secondly, if something, once it is necessary to work, it is necessary for everyone. All people are equal, aren't they? So let everybody work. The situation when some people earn money in a mine at the factory with salty sweat and bloody calluses, while others simply print them, sitting back and sipping expensive whiskey or brandy, is abnormal. Such a situation is not acceptable in principle. And there are no explanations and no excuses to this state of affairs, absolutely. Money is just paper, candy wrappers. They are not backed by anything tangible, and according to that, money is simply drawn. Sorry, is printed. And these candy wrappers are distributed among the slaves as wages for labor. When the slaves are given an extra wrapper, it means their salary is increased, and they are happy. Are you shocked? Alas, c'est la vie. It is our bitter reality. How is the financial world organized? It is a pyramid. The Fed, U.S. Federal Reserve System, is at the top. The Fed prints dollars. How much? As much as it wants. Of course, Fed adheres to some of its own internal rules and regulations. It tries, for example, not to print too many dollars to prevent complete devaluation of the currency, etc., etc. But in principle, Fed can print as many dollars as it wants. At least, there are no external limitations for that. Absolutely, the U.S. Fed is guided solely by the reasons of expediency. The lower levels of the global pyramid are the central banks of different countries. All other local national banks are situated on even lower levels. Of course, all of this is slightly simplified, but in general, everything corresponds to reality and reflects overall picture. Why do we need banks? Speaking figuratively, banks play the role of blood vessels in the social organism. Through these vessels, the money, blood, from the heart, the central bank, enters to all its organs. Money, blood, wash these organs. They bring life to them. It's not me, you can find this information in any textbook on economics. In which connection dollars are mentioned here? In what relation does the Fed have to us, sinners? The most direct relation to us, I'm telling you. After all, dollar is the global currency. Don't you know this? Let's say, Russian Central Bank, one little proud bird, cannot print rubles without permission of US Fed. Absolutely not. As soon as Russia supplies oil and gas to the USA for a billion dollars, it is a wagon of colored pieces of paper with pictures of great American presidents. Then, Russian Central Bank will be allowed to print rubles in the amount of billion dollars with a clear conscience. This is the only way. Otherwise, Russia will be expelled from the IMF. And in general, the ruble won't be a freely convertible currency. But let it be. This is the topic for another conversation. Check my site later. Do not get distracted. Let's come back to the pyramid. Well, okay, the blood vessels wash. All of this, of course, is wonderful. But the main question is, why does the banker live better than worker? We still have no answer. So what? That he has blood vessel. Shall we give him cash bonus for that or vouchers for enhanced diet? I, for example, build houses or bake bread. It is also very important 
Does he work harder than me? No. Then why does he live better? And one small question in addition. I've been working and working like a damned for public benefit from morning to night. But anyway, I can't pay off the loans. And all of my friends are in the same situation. Is this normal? It is obviously wrong and unfair. This is eternal credit bondage. But whom do I owe the money to? I owe money to banks, to these blood vessels, washing all and everything. Fuck them all. I don't need this fucking washing. In short, they make fools of us. That's all. As usual, bankers take advantage of the fact that we simple hard workers don't have time to figure out all these tricky schemes. We have to feed our families. That's why they take advantage of this situation and ride on our backs, bastards. So don't tell me about blood vessels. We know these vessels. Just give me the gun and I... Easy, easy, stay calm. And let's figure this out together, okay? Calmly and slowly. But I warn you that I have to strain your brains. It's not easy to unravel in a couple of minutes those things which have been tangled during the centuries by the best sophisticated minds of mankind. But we will try. At least we will show something visually, something from the life of modern banks. We will demonstrate everything on the live example, so to speak. You'll enjoy. So imagine the following quite unusual situation and watch my hands. Let it be a Nick and Jane and let it be a Mr. Smith, a banker of Nick and Jane. They both keep their money in his bank. That's why we use the title Mr. Mr. Smith with respect. Nick really wants to buy, well, let's say Jane's bicycle, but he has no money. More precisely, he has money, but not enough, only $10, while Jane wants $100 for her precious bicycle. That's a problem. What should Nick do? Well, this bicycle is so desirable. He gives Jane his $10 as a deposit and asks plaintively not to sell the bike to anyone. He says that he will bring the rest of the money soon. At the same time, he runs to his bank, to the respected Mr. Smith, to get a loan for the missing $90. As ill luck, Mr. Smith has no money at this moment, but he knows perfectly about $10, which Nick gave to Jane. And where will Jane bring his money to? That's right, she will put these $10 in her lovely bank to the same Mr. Smith. Therefore, Mr. Smith asks Nick to come back tomorrow in the hope that tomorrow he will get these $10. And everything happens this way. The next day, Jane brings $10 to the bank. The bank provides Nick these $10 on credit. Nick immediately gives them to Jane. She again puts them in a bank. The bank again provides Nick these $10 on credit, etc. As long as Nick the fool will gather enough money for the bicycle. Don't you get confused yet? Be patient, I told you. These demons have been trying to confuse you during thousand years. These damn economists and financiers. But anyway, we will figure everything out. So what do we have in the end? Nick finally got the bike from Jane. Wow! But at the same time, Nick owes $90 to the bank, Mr. Smith. And the bank, in its turn, owes $100 to Jane. In other words, those $10, which were existed initially, have magically turned into $200, $190 of debts plus real $10. But these $10 would also turn into $1,000, even in a million or a billion, if Nick would make a more expensive purchase. In this case, our $10 would make the increasing number of its cycles, circuits from hands to hands. That's it. So, what happens in today's world? SOS! It appears that banks also make money out of thin air and multiply them. Not only Fed can produce money, 
but banks either. In short, everybody can do this, except you and me. We are not in the business at this celebration of life. I would like to print or draw some money as well. In fact, these banks multiply money without any control. And we're still wondering why the banker lives better. What are naive fools are we? Now it is clear why. The one who produces the money, of course, lives better. But this is not enough. From this moment, poor Nick will never be able to repay his debts owed to the bank, no matter how hard he would work. Silly Nick doesn't know it yet, that he's in slavery to the bank in credit bondage forever because those $90 which he owes to Mr. Smith do not exist in nature at all. Sly Mr. Smith made his money out of nothing. He created them out of thin air, just one click. And $10 turned into $200. Yes, but you can object reasonably that the bank itself owes $100 to Jane. And it turns out that bank is in credit bondage to Jane, and it won't be able to repay its debts owed to Jane either. So where is the bank's profit? What's the trick? Ha! You ask what the trick is. The trick is in the fact that bank has a lot of such chains, thousands and millions, and they will never come for their money all at once. If one chain comes, the bank will return her the money of 10 other depositors. That's it. It means that the bank's debt is not dangerous and not burdensome. In fact, bank's debt is virtual. It exists only on the paper or in the computer program. It will never be repaid in reality, only in case a panic it happens. When frightened depositors suddenly will come for their money all at once, or maybe, do you know any other reason why banks go bankrupt from time to time? Here's why. Because there are not enough money for all depositors. There is 90% of thin air in the bank vaults. Just a lilac fog. Thus, bank is okay. It blooms and smells. We don't need to worry about it. But our Nick has serious problems now. He has to repay all the debts owed to the bank, completely, with interest and penalties. You know this. He will be forced to take a new credit in order to repay the old one, then again the new one, and again, and again, endlessly until his death. There is no way out of this credit running knot. It does not exist in principle. That's it. Trap slammed. Now Nick is perpetual debtor of bank. He is a slave. From now on, he will work, 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 and work for bank until he dies. But he still won't repay his debts. After his death, his children and grandchildren will work for this bank. They all are future slaves of the bank. More precisely, they are slaves of this monstrous and cannibalistic global financial system which spawned this ruthless and inhumane mechanism which must be destroyed finally. Financial Apocalypse. It can break our financial chains and can save all of us. It can finally release us from centuries of slavery. All the old will be burned completely in purifying flame of apocalypse and the new will be established. The Federal Reserve will be burned and the wind of change will dispel the ashes of Fed of this damned insatiable octopus spider enmeshed the whole world with its sticky financial nets. Banks in their current form will be raised to the ground. They do not wash anything. Do not believe this bullshit. They bring death to all living things. They suck our blood. Banks are parasites on the healthy body of the society. Mites inflated from our blood. They are voracious and insatiable leeches clung tightly to us. 
What do they actually do useful? Do they give loans at their extortionate interest? Actually, why do banks charge you interest on loans? Have you ever thought about it? Usury has always been condemned and despised at all times and among all nations. And now it is the norm. An entrepreneur gets a bank loan. For what do they charge interest on? He wants to create something useful for the society, for the whole society, including the bankers. He has to be encouraged and given privileges for that, instead of stripping off three skins from it. But today's banks were created not for that. The interests of the society are not important for them. Banks take care only about their own financial profits and benefits. They don't care about the people. Today's banks are faithful servants of the Federal Reserve. They are greedy and avid bloodsuckers, small ghouls in the service of a giant and evil monster. Modern Earl Dracula, who plunged the whole world into financial bondage, and it sucks and sucks our blood, and it will continue to suck the blood of our children and our grandchildren if we don't stop and destroy it. Hammer an aspen stake to all the banks, and do not forget the silver bullets. Apocalypse, only financial apocalypse. We have no other choices. We are not slaves, we are the people, and we choose freedom. And this freedom is already on the threshold. Now with the advent of MMM, financial apocalypse is inevitable. From now on, it's just a matter of time. Grain has been sown, and it will sprout. It is now sprouting, right now at this very moment, and it won't perish. What is MMM? Global Mutual Aid Society, Worldwide People's Bank, Financial Social Network. You can call it as you like. The point is not in the title. The point is that it is a voluntary and formal network of millions of people across the earth, people who rose up against financial slavery. They decided to declare war on the Fed and other banks and to win this war. In order to achieve this goal, they combine their money together. And it doesn't matter that separately their savings are not big. But there are a lot of people in MMM. Millions. And together, it is a tremendous force. Invincible force. And this force is growing with each passing day. Indeed, due to what do the banks exist? Due to the oligarchs and the billionaires? No. They exist due to the same ordinary people who keep their meager savings in banks. MMM really knocks the bottom out of banks, opening people's eyes. Why do people keep their money in banks? Because there is no alternative. Banks are monopolies. Where should people bring their money? Like Jane, to Mr. Smith only? Not in this bank, so in another one? Not to Mr. Smith, so to another banker? His name will be Mr. Johnson. But anyway, it's the same shit. All of them are tarred with the same brush. All of them are native kids of kind and solicitous mother spider named Fed. They are little spiders. And now we have finally an alternative. MMM, it's yours. People help each other here. Today you have helped. Tomorrow you will be helped back. That's the principle of MMM. Do you want a fat banker to buy another limousine or another villa for your hard money? Do you want to become the next Nick or the next Jane? Do you want to be the next slave? It's better to join MMM and let your money help those who are in need right now. Low-income person, disabled person, pensioner, or mother of many children, Love thy neighbor, help him. MMM is a kind of giant common saying where all the people put their money in and then they take them back as much as needed. As much as they need at this very moment. They do not seize, but they just take. In fact, a human being doesn't need a lot of money. It is only important the awareness that he has them. 
The only thing that is really necessary for everyone is the confidence in the future. MMM just gives this confidence to people. It gives the feeling of complicity, that you are not alone. You will always be helped in tough times. You won't be left alone. MMM is the unit of a new society, a brighter and cleaner society. It is the unit of the new world where the money won't exist, where everything will be different. Honestly and fairly, there will be no slaves and no masters, and everyone will work for pleasure and for the benefit of society, and the good will conquer the evil, finally. Everything will be in that new world, certainly. Welcome to System MMM, SergeiMavrode.com. We are waiting for you. We can do a lot. We change the world, and we will change it. Everything will be MMM. Financial apocalypse is inevitable.